Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, we finally got what we've been asking for from the Boruto anime. Well, at least I did. You know, Boruto episode 87, I just, like, finally, <laughs> like, finally. If you guys watched my last review, I was big. Like, I just wanted to see some hands being thrown. And I ain't going to lie. Very poor choreographic moments sometimes and a whole lot of the fights throughout the anime. Like, it's been since episode 65, you know. And a lot of people want to go ahead and be like, that's basically like a Naruto fight. You know, 65 with Naruto Sasuke versus Momoshiki. Since we got to see some, like, proper hands been thrown in the anime. And I ain't going to lie. My girl Sawada was on point with the Taijutsu this episode. I had to watch that fight scene. When the episode first started and they, the way they built up that fight between Boruto and Goku, I knew, I knew shit was going to go down. Like, by the climax of the fight, I was like, nah, we're going to at least get like a 45 to second to a minute like scene where like it's just straight up action rocks and shit everywhere or just like straight up hands being thrown with lit ass music and that's what we got guys board to episode 87 and i like the way that they 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 built the fight you know because obviously borto shouldn't have been able to wouldn't have just couldn't have been able to beat Koku by himself. This dude got particle style release. Like, you feel me? And they've been taking out Jonah Ninja since the beginning of the arc. You know, my man's Boruto, despite him being a prodigy's child, all that, he's still a Genin, and I ain't gonna hold you. You know, we still in this whole situation where the new era kids are considerably weaker or just softer in heart than the old generation. So we still fighting with that aspect. And I like the emotion they use this episode. You know, we see in Boruto's face, like, when he realized, oh, shit, this nigga could do particle style. He's like, yo, in his eyes, like, this, I'm seeing, like, in Boruto's eyes, he's like, okay, so this is a fight fight. We fighting. <laughs> like, it was amazing. My man's Boruto had to snap back to his senses, like, yo, life or death. If we get hit with that, we're going to die. And... It was crazy. It was a very good one-on-one -on -one matchup. Of course, my man's Koku had to have overpowered him, you know, because that's just how it was supposed to be. They're meant to be stronger than sh regular Shinobi anyway. And at the end of the day, like I said, my man's Boruto is just a guinea. But still, episode 87 did not disappoint at all with the animations. It was crisp. Everything was on point. My girl Sarada showed up with a calm punch to save Boruto's life. And Boruto honestly should have died twice this episode. You know, Sarada really just saved this dude's life. And I ain't gonna lie. For her just having to be Sakura's daughter, her usefulness right now is just like, it's beyond this. It's just beyond my comprehension. But then again, then it automatically hits you back. Like, you forget she is the Uchiha. Like, she, that Uchiha bloodline in her is just taking over. The uselessness inside of her, you know, that Sarada tried, that Sakura tried to infect her with. But, you know, it wasn't going to happen like that. My girl Sarada was on point. And we see the teamwork between Boruto and Sarada. And I like what they did here. A lot of people will look at this fight and say, okay, wow, Chocho was really like, she didn't really do much. Uh, I guess you could say she was there. She had moments where she was just like in the way. But at the end of the day, you got to realize Sarada and Boruto has been fighting together for a long time. Now, and it's showcased very easily in this fight. You know, my favorite, like I said, my favorite scene was when Boruto first started off attacking with the kunai really on point with it you know had to go head to head and then sarada came in and this was just the highlight of the whole episode the little mini hand-to-hand -hand combat match between sarada and kako like they was throwing hands i ain't gonna lie big time hands and then it just goes to say like yo i can't wait till they get older and i can't wait till they just master all of their jutsu and sarada is on point with the combos too how she just does the clean fireball jutsu it's just like they just showed us this episode like y'all got a lot to look forward to when you know team seven actually matures and they really start laying hands on people for a job right now all they do is just fight to defend or you know fight to get information you know they're still on, in that stage where should the adults handle this situation or should they not but i'm happy that we're like pushing it forward to like nah you know we finna handle this right now we finna throw down 
And, you know, episode 88 review, it looks like we're probably going to get the same situation instead with Shikadai, Chocho, and Inogen. So maybe now we're going to get to see Chocho shine a little bit better because, you know, she was just basically reading off of Boruto and Sabre how they were acting. And their teamwork, their chemistry was flawless. I ain't going to lie. And, you know, there was plenty of times where just Chocho was just in a way like when the rock almost fell on her. And that was very understandable. They made that very realistic. But still, you know... Chocho came through with the expansion jutsu, punching all those rocks. It just shows you like how useful each of these characters could be in a one-on-one fight. And honestly, if I had to say like between the three of them, whoever had the best chance in a straight up one-on-one fight versus Koku, I would say it would be Sarada. Because we already got to see what Boruto could do versus Kaku by himself. And you know, we get a glimpse of that. Basically, if the fight would have continued on just straight up one-on-one, Boruto would have died hands down no questions asked unless you know something would have happened with his eye you know and then we still got this whole little weird diamond mark on his palm you know obviously nothing happened there bro i was holding my head the whole episode i'm like they're gonna do something to boruto they're gonna just pull out some ass pull that we just don't know about and it's gonna be crazy but they did it they did it very like they did it very great like where sarada showed up as the reinforcements and they had to handle the situation right then and there but still you know, we get Koku, he's finally down for the count, and next episode is going to be Koku, like, this dude got no jutsu, but supposedly he's supposed to be, like, the physically strongest out of all of the fabrications, which is real interesting, you know, because we're pushing it to the point where, all right, Anoki's going to have to find out next episode about these five human hearts that uh, these fabrications are going to need, and, you know, Boruto's talking sensitive to this nigga. After the fight, he said something that's real, like, interesting to me, you know, when Onoki saw Kako's dead body, he was just like, why did you listen to me and stuff like that? You know, Boruto's pulling up like, it seemed to him like he had a complete will of his own. Even though they're enemies, he still defended him in that sense against Onoki's, you know, strict belief that these niggas had no will of their own. It was obvious that he wasn't going to listen to Onoki. He wanted to straight up kill Boruto. He just wanted to get that sensation of fighting throughout the whole fight. And they had very great use for his characters. I don't feel like they killed him off too quickly, despite he had, like, I would say the least amount of time out of, least amount of screen time out of all of the fabrications. They use his character very good. And I'd say, personally, it's a very good, his character had a very good character development on Boruto's character. You know, because at the end of the day, Boruto, like I say, experienced two near-death experiences. First time, you know, Sarada straight up saved his life. No questions asked. The second time towards the end of the fight, yo, man's Koku, like, like, this is the type of suspense that the Boruto anime needs more of. He was really finna throw, like, a huge as dismantling jutsu right on top of Boruto's dome. And I'm not gonna lie, guys. I was just like, I was like, yo, I, I couldn't. I was looking at the TV so, like, shocked, like, how is Boruto gonna get out of this and of course this nigga just gonna die like right there in front of Boruto's face and I feel like that's gonna do a lot to Boruto's character you know the whole Momo Shiki arc was pretty big on him and he matured but that was more focusing on the relationship between him and his dad now we're in the real world where he's realizing okay his dad is not gonna be at all of those crazy battles that he's gonna have to fight and he just really saw an enemy who was a second away from killing him die right in front of him so in his head you gotta be like yo if that was just like any regular shinobi or even if he was just if his body could have held off for a second longer boruto would not be with us and that is crazy that's the type of suspense we need more of from the anime and i am very excited i ain't gonna lie the mitsuki arc started to die down for me like the past two episodes three episodes episode 87 really picked it up they should have kept this type of intense and this emotional impact throughout the entire arc but you know i guess i can't judge we got what we got but i'm really excited for episode 88 like i said sarada and her shining gun and my man's boruto and his quick wits it's crazy it's just it's just crazy and it's like, you know, we got to see him use a little bit of the lightning style jutsu here. He didn't do any Rasengans in the fight. He didn't do any Boruto wind stream. He didn't do none of his, you know, signature jutsus. He was really focused on that Shadow Clone jutsu. I guess you could say, you know, the fact that he was facing a jutsu that could, you know, really like completely dismantle him just by touching it. Boruto was a little shook, you know, so he was 
iffy about that close range combat. But you know, when Sarita popped up with that shining gun, she was on it on point. They caught the weakness, the 20 second lag between him. But then he just straight up, Kaku just flipped the tables on him that last minute. And I saw that coming, but still, it was a very good fight. Boruto, Sarita, and Chocho versus Kaku. And we got Boruto, Sarita, and Chocho coming out on top. Just by luck. Well, I guess you can't say by luck. At best, Kaku should have ended up at least killing one of them. And he was really about to. He was about to kill my man's Boruto. But his body completely just broke out on him last minute. You know, at first, when that first happened, I'm thinking, like, Boruto had to have done or something happened to the Jutsu. Like, I don't know what. But I was just like, there's no way. This thing is right on top of Boruto's dome. How is he going to get out of this? And they go ahead and pull the, oh, he died before he could finish his last move. Typical anime stunt, you know? And I guess you could say it fit in that moment. It was very acceptable for me because my heart, I ain't going to lie, it was jumping. I ain't felt like that since episode 64 and 65 of the Boruto anime, you know? But still, Shikadai, we got uh, Shikadai able to get the valuable information is crossed to the hidden leaf. My man's Naruto is trying to get over it. And I hate how they have to do all of this diplomatic work. But, you know, it seems more like that's that's just how it be, you know, because back in Shippuden, if something was going down, you know, they was crossing any borderline without any permission. It did not matter. But my man's Naruto is trying to go about it the right way, get the permission from the feudal lords and see how they could go about it. But what really caught me by surprise is that they didn't really show much of Konohamaru last episode. So I'm really expecting them to do something big with Konohamaru. Like I said, he got to hit at least two people with the smooth Rasengan before he leave the Hidden Stone Village. And it's going to be lit. My man Shikadai came through this episode by informing Shikamaru. My girl Sarada came through saving Boruto's life and then just straight up throwing down. You know, it, it was lit. We still got... You know, they got captured by the end of the episode with Kirara's Genjutsu. So it looks like basically her eye just can do Genjutsu. There's really not much that not that much into it. It's a real cool eye. The color scheme is real, like nice to look at. It's a beautiful color. I ain't gonna lie. But it seems like as soon as she opened her eyes, Inujin was caught under a Genjutsu. But you know, the dialogue was lit. He was talking mad trash. She was talking mad trash. And it was basically just a roast battle between them. But, you know, Inogen had to give in to that Genjutsu. So we're going to be right there. Episode 88. I'm excited for the next episode. Boruto and them are captured. But we got Shikadai uh, and Chocho and Inogen trying to set these dudes free. Let's see what this new Inoshiko Cho trio can do versus Kokyoku. Like... You know, they, they, I ain't going to hold you. They gave Boruto and Sarada justice this fight. I'm satisfied with it. Now, let's see what the Inoshika tr trio can do. All right. It's your boy, Black Uchiha 3, Long Face, Skinny Body. Let me know what you guys think in this video. Let me know what guys think of episode 87 of Boruto. I'm excited for episode 88. Um, were you guys satisfied with the way the Boruto versus Koku fight ended? Or did you feel like they should have went another route? Let me know what you all think in the comment section below. Drop a like. Leave a comment, subscribe. It's your boy Black Chat 3 Long Face. Skinny body, holla at me, I'ma holla at y'all.